All right, my name is um, uh, Chief Michael Laux, L-O-U-X, with the Largo Police Department. Uh, this briefing is intended to be a general outline of the events that occurred on this date. It's not going to be specifics because it's still a very much ongoing and active investigation. Uh, the Largo Police Department's involvement became about 3 o'clock this morning. Uh, we were contacted from the Clearwater Police Department who had responded and investigated a felony battery case, a felony domestic battery case in their city. They asked us to go by 1760 Clearwater Largo Road, which is Bayside Apartments, um, Bayside Court Apartments, in an attempt to locate a subject by the name of Renato Muhaj. Uh, he is a male born 418 of 89, and he was the subject of their investigation, felony domestic battery. Um, our officers went to the location, 1760 Clearwater Largo Road, to an attempt and make contact uh, with Mr. Muhaj, uh, upon arrival at the apartment complex and getting closer to the apartment, they located signs that uh, a crime had occurred uh, that gave them concern for the occupants within the apartment and gave them exigency to enter the apartment. Uh, once the officers entered the apartment, they located uh, Muhaj's ex. Uh, her name is Suwala. Saliaj, Saliaj, um, and I can spell that for you, S-U-E-L-A, her last name, S-A-L-I-A-J. She's a female, 1213 of 91. That's where she resided uh, with the common child between Renato and her, and that common child was Alessia. When the officers uh, entered the apartment, they located Suella, uh, deceased within the apartment, and they could not find Alessia. Uh, that caused a concern, and that was for, that prompted the Amber Alert that was set off earlier this morning. So with the Amber Alert, they were looking for Alessia, they were looking for Renato Muhaj, and they were looking for the 2017 Gold Kia Sportage. So with the Amber Alert came the assistance and uh, partners with the FDLE and partners with FBI. Uh, as that Amber Alert was out, we were also actively investigating, our detectives were actively investigating the case, trying to locate uh, Renato, and they had cell phone coverage, they were pinging cell phones that were related to the call in an attempt to try to locate him. Uh, at a point about 8.30 this morning, we received a ping in the area of Bel Air Road and St. Paul's Drive. So the ping is a large radius. Uh, it doesn't like pinpoint it down to this room. It's, it could be you know, a mile long or a mile wide in circumference. But uh, as that information was given out over the radio, a Clearwater Sergeant <clears throat> took it upon themselves as other officers were also, uh, but he was looking for that vehicle, spotted the vehicle in the area of the 1600 block of St. Paul's Drive. Uh, one of our detectives drove by the vehicle to see if it was occupied. Uh, it appeared that it was occupied. As this was all going on, that information was being relayed over the radio and other officers responded to the area. Uh, they closed in on the vehicle and they located uh, Renato Mohaj and Alessia in the vehicle. Uh, they were both placed into custody. Alessia was unharmed, Mohaj was, uh, Renato was also unharmed, um, but she's been recovered successfully and Mr. Muhaj has been uh, charged with murder in the first degree, kidnapping, and child abuse. Um, I believe Clearwater Police Department also has additional charges for the, for the case that actually stemmed from us getting involved in the felony domestic battery, um, but you would have to look at their affidavits to find out what charges they had. So all in all, for, for this investigation, we had uh, the Clearwater Police Department, Largo Police Department, obviously we're involved, uh, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, FBI, Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, and the Pinellas Pasco State Attorney's Office. Um, it, was, it was a great outcome, and um, that's it. There's not many more questions or many more, much more information I could provide, but if you guys have any questions, I'm willing to answer. How was Suella killed? Uh, you can read the affidavit. I'm really not going to go into that. There's still... Part of the investigation is going on. They have to see with the medical examiner's office. So when they get to the cause and manner of death, it was clearly a homicide, but 
the medical examiner's uh, office will give us the specifics on that. Why was he in the area of Bel Air Drive or Bel Air Road and St. Paul's Drive? What brought him there? We don't know that yet. Was there a history of any type of domestic? It seems that uh, if you look into Pennell's records, he had a clean record other than some driving issues. Yeah, I don't know his background as far as any kind of interactions or domestic battery uh, charges with either the deceased or uh, any of his other family members. Chief, when we talk about the case that that was Clearwater, did that involve Suella at all? Uh, it did not. It was uh, felony domestic battery charges on other domestic, uh, on other family members. Chief, to your knowledge, was there a restraining order in place? To my knowledge, I don't know, okay. but I have not heard that there was. Had the police department ever responded to their apartment complex before? Was there any issues you guys were made aware of ahead of time? I don't have that information, so I'd be speculating and I don't know. What is, what is Alessia's status right now? Is she with other family members or what? She is with family members at this time, yes. She is um, unharmed and with family members. And was she, uh, was the couple married or? They were not. Okay. They were just, uh, they had a child in common. Can you talk about just her condition when she was found and just was there any signs that, that she might have been possibly a future victim? I don't have any indication of that. Uh, she was fine. Uh, unharmed. Um, and that's all I could say really about her. And she's she talking about sick. a successful recovery. Um, both people taken into custody at this point. Was the um, suspect, did he have a weapon at the time when, when your officers brought him in? So I don't have that information right now and I wouldn't, that would still be something that they're part of the investigation that's ongoing. I mean, at this point, really the information I'm trying to put out is it because we had a successful Amber Alert in a location of the child uh, and we wanted to let the general public know that the sub subject has been arrested, he's placed in custody, there's no harm to the uh, or concern for the general public. Uh, but a lot of the small details that some of the questions that you guys are asking is going to be something that, like I said, it's a fresh investigation ongoing. So. I know the investigation is still ongoing out of the apartment complex, but did Swell have any upper body trauma? Was there a firearm recovered from the scene? Anything that you can... Again, that'll, that's still part of what we're investigating right now, or be part of what we're investigating right now. Excuse me if I missed. Was it the Amber Alert or that led to the tip of where his vehicle was located, or was that just police came across it? Uh, it was... It was kind of both, I guess. I mean, the Amber... You have a Clearwater Police Department officer or sergeant was involved so they're they already know what's going on because they asked us to come down here so both Largo and Clearwater knew the vehicle were a little more intimate with the case than you know the Amber Alert is nationwide really uh, so we're a little more intimate with the case so I think a combination of both but they already knew about the vehicle they were just looking for and the ping certainly helped out. Not to so. compare it to other cases but sometimes when you have you know, a homicide and then a child taken, there's like a large flea. And the fact that he was within a couple miles of where this other crime took place, is it kind of gratifying that this was able to end so quick? We had this, we had discussions, all of us had discussions this morning and as this case was unfolding uh, with major concern for Alessia. And we're thankful that, it, that it, this conclusion came about, so absolutely. And where, where the car was found, was that in Largo or Clearwater? It was found in Largo. In Largo's jurisdiction. So Clearwater police officer going above and beyond outside his jurisdiction. I mean, what do you think about that? A hundred percent great. You know, that's what law enforcement officers do. I mean, especially when you have an eight-year-old missing and an Amber Alert that's local. Typically when you see an Amber Alert, it could be from, you know, another state or another jurisdiction. You're not really sure where they are. And it's just kind of a flyer. You keep your eye out for it. But do you, are you going to see the vehicle? Who really knows? So I'm sure most of the law enforcement officers, because you saw Pinellas County Sheriff's Office deputies, Clearwater Largo, they were all just posted all around the area hoping to find this vehicle. So uh, yeah, it's great. Is there any information on you know, details of custody of Alessia prior to all of this and going forward? No, not this time. Did she live with mom? She lived with her mother. He did not live. I believe he had a separate address off of uh, Nursery Road. And the incident that started all this in Clearwater, you said it was felony domestic battery, also a murder too, or no? It was not a murder. Okay. It was just felony domestic battery. 
and kind of that's kind of a courtesy. We don't talk about other agencies' cases just to let them, if they have any, you know, they would have more detailed information on what they investigate than we would. Uh, I would say that, like I said, all the agencies that were involved, FDLE and FBI were here. As soon as we activated the Amber Alert, they were here. Uh, there's another, it's called a CART, was a child abduction response team. Uh, that was activated early on in this case, which is basically an agreement between uh, local city state partners where they all kind of come together and have a coordinated response to locate a missing child that was in the early stages of being put up and set up. Uh, but luckily it didn't have to come to a full activation because we had a successful location. What so evidence cool. led you guys to charge him with child abuse? Uh, that'll be detailed more in the investigation. Any other questions? Car found so close to St. Paul School. Can you give us any hint as to whether she's a student there or? I can't tell you where she was in school. I know our protocol because I had listened to the radio traffic when it was going on. As soon as that ping came across, uh, St. Paul's SRO was on the radio, immediately shut their school down, locked it down. Uh, we had, I would think, about six officers in that area just protecting that school because of the concern. Uh, but. I can't divulge where she went to school. Any more questions?